How's it going guys? Agents here and today I set off on a journey to find the answer to the question that's been on everybody's mind. Can you beat Dying Light 2 with only kicks? Weapons? Get out of here! Punching? Vamos! Just me and my chiseled waxed legs. The basic kick. The air kick. The drop kick. If it involves my feet making contact with some lucky man's face, it's fair game. Now where they go after said kick is out of my hands. Unfortunately, there's no way to silently take someone down with my legs, and some bosses just have a natural immunity to kicks, so this challenge would be a huge test of patience. So I did what anyone in their right mind would do in my situation. I regretted it. It's 2036, Corona has gotten worse, and not even Dr. Fauci wants to social distance anymore. But it's okay, because I have my best friends with me. Meet Shorty. He's a right leg, dominant, dependable, but between you and me, he's a couple inches shorter than his brother. And who's his brother? Yo, play the clip! Stop. There he is. Boomer. Explosive, strong, but unstable. Mostly due to the knee replacement he got a few years back. The three of us had a pretty long day. So we found a lovely resort, ate some dinner, and listened to some music. Yo, there was this one thick ass woman sitting by the pool, and I think she was kinda into me. She was classy. I grabbed a beer with this one guy who kept talking about how he was in a video game before and I didn't mind until I took a sip and It's gone flat. I was mad. I was up since dawn cleaning the world of zombies and how does the world return the favor? Some flat ass beer. I threw the beer at the world and left. I wasn't the only one who was mad. Shorty was twitching with anger. There was this one old lady just enjoying the view, and Shorty kicked her in the boob. Not gonna lie, Shorty went a little overboard, but before I could reprimand him, the old lady's angry older sister pounced on us. This was my first real fight, so I was a little shaky, but eventually I kicked these zombies with so much passion and purpose that the angry older sister decided to take the easy way out. I entered the nearby house that she once inhabited and slept in her bed like a Goldilocks. Not long after, I was haunted by my past. I dreamt about my sister who I haven't seen since the beginning of the pandemic and my horrible experience with my very first COVID vaccine. Once more, I felt the coldness of the stainless steel needle and the moisture of the pharmacist's clammy hands. I woke up in a cold sweat and thought to myself, Johnson & Johnson should stick to baby powder. But I didn't let that get me down. That was all in the past, it's a beautiful new day, and there was so much to explore. So I started my typical morning routine. I ate some raw honey, took a bath in the lake, and went to church. It was peaceful until I ran into some dirty ass infidels and I was forced to smite them with the wrath of God's hand, or rather, God's foot. After delivering the good news, I went to the subway and was greeted by the dirtiest infidel of them all. He was about to eat my ass when the glorious light of the Holy Spirit delivered me from his transgressions. I ran, ran as far away as I could, until I ran into this bully kicking his victim. I repeat, kicking! I'm the only one who's allowed to kick around these parts. I moseyed my way down to him and I did something that I never thought I would have to do. Kick him, not with one leg, but two. Shorty and Boomer were amazing on their own, but together they could shake nations. The sound of my legs breaking their skulls reverberated through the tunnels. And when I was done, 
The victim gave me a key and told me about a city that needed someone with my particular set of skills. I introduced myself to the people, but I suddenly felt really constipated. It was the flat ass beer. And when I woke up, these people were putting a noose around my neck. This is what they do to constipated newcomers? Hang them? I was furious. I was just about to drop the biggest deuce on their foreheads when this man threw a knife at the noose and freed me. He told me his name was Hakan as he carried me to the nearest toilet. When I was done, there were two girls with him. We talked, Hakan showed me the city, and he gave me a watch that would shock me every time my balls itched. <laughs> I was now free to roam the city, so I followed my dreams. I became a personal trainer, an electrician, a tax collector. There was even a scientist who thought that giving goats some voltage would make their milk tastier. So I assisted him, and I instantly found out why vegans exist. It was fun having careers without the corresponding degrees. But the thing I missed, the thing my heart truly yearned for, was delivering justice. Max, what do you want for dinner? Justice. Whenever there was a call for help, I was nearby, ready to break the bones of these criminals and save the day. News of my good deeds spread fast, and I eventually acquired enough experience to learn a new type of kick, the air kick. But now, I can simply get some elevation and air kick everybody and air kick everybody I did. Except zombies in close quarter situations. It was awkward trying to parry them since they kinda just flail their arms around at you and I couldn't get high enough to air kick them so I thought outside the box and cheesed them. There was this hole in the wall that I could kick them through but they couldn't hit me through. It was perfect. There was even this man named Marco who tried to doo-doo in my people's water and even he wasn't smart enough to realize what was happening to him. So, with a brain and three different types of kicks in my arsenal, I was pretty satisfied, right? WRONG! I needed more. I would not rest until I was the master of all kicking styles. The next one on my list would be the best in the game, the drop kick. If you've ever played Dying Light, you know how broken this move is. You could be the fattest ogre in the swamp and this kick would turn you into a rag doll. But I couldn't get it until I upgraded my health to 180 and that requires a lot of inhibitors. This rare item you can get in special dark zones or by defeating mini bosses. So. The grind for inhibitors began. There were a couple inhibitors that were really easy to get to. Others were guarded by those mini bosses I mentioned called the GRE anomalies, but I literally kicked one in the pelvis and it was so shook that it fled to the earth's core. I proceeded to loot the inhibitor it so effectively guarded. Now the thing that was hard to do were these GRE dark zones that required stealth. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I wasn't able to silently take down enemies because it involved me grabbing them from behind with my arms and we don't use those around here. There were so many zombies roaming around in these tight hallways so I would try my best to sneak past them all, rush to the locked door that protected the inhibitor, panic. No, no, oh my god, where is it? No! And just snatched the inhibitor while everybody woke up and tenderized my ass. There were four of them in this dark zone, so I did that four times. The problem is that when I reached the fourth one, there was a Chungus guarding it this time. What the f- Thankfully, there was a door that led to the outside, so I stepped out, mentally prepared myself, rushed in there, picked the lock at record speed, and yoinked the inhibitor. I finally had enough HP to buy the dropkick. 
with this new kick up my sleeves, I would become the most feared man in town. I was even recruited by this rival faction called the Peacekeepers who promised that they could get me to the city where I can find my long lost sister. I did some secret double agent work, but I knew that deep inside, my heart belonged to the people of Old Villador. For no particular reason at all, this was Sophie. I would make her the queen of this place one day. But first, I had to gain the trust of her annoying little brother and her pet dog. Sophie. Relax, Herman. He saved Barney, remember? Thankfully, we all came to an understanding. Now that we were all on the same page, we brought the fight to the bandits and the peacekeepers. We even met this man named Wim, who was the most crucial character in the game. Of course, we had some casualties of our own. You better get out of here, Anderson. You're on bizarre turf. But thanks to the intel I gathered as a double agent, I exploited their allergies to hay. <laughs> now that we were done with this city, it was time for another. But as soon as we stepped outside, Hakan got sniped with an arrow. I went over to him and I noticed some claw marks on his chest. I assumed it was from those girls that were with him before, but apparently it was from the previous peacekeeper commander named Lucas. I was mad that he was cheating on his girls with a dude, but I spared him just like he spared me. I chased the sniper, choked him, God, I mean her, and got blue balled. <laughs> <laughs> Getting my balls stepped on gave me inspiration for a new move called Head Stomp, which I used right away on my next mini boss. I executed it so perfectly that even the peacekeepers came to watch. I went backstage to get changed for my next performance, but when I came back, I was shocked to see that the pharmacist that experimented on me and my sister came to watch me. I was both flattered and furious, but I would soon be scared after this. As I peeled this pervert off of me, I thought to myself, where does a pharmacist learn these kind of moves? I tried reenacting what he did to us and all of a sudden I was constipated again, but this time it felt good. I felt strong. And that's when I realized that my constipation wasn't due to the flat ass beer. It was because of the vaccine whilst the pharmacist gave me as a kid. I tracked him down and respectfully asked him about my sister. He picked me up, took a good look at me, and tried to remember who I was. He took his time, and just when I was starting to like it, he dropped me. And that's when Kate Bishop struck again. I ran after her to get her autograph. Waltz did too, but I think he came off a bit too strong. After the autograph, I told her that she's going on a date with me right now. <laughs> Bossy. I like that. I asked her what her name was, and she said it so seriously like we were in a game or something. I am the one. I said that she was weird, but my type of weird. Then, I brought her to the rooftop to watch the sunrise, and the spark between us was so strong that it brought power to a city that had a blackout for 10 years. What can I say? I'm a stud. She wanted a closer look at the city, so she gave me a paraglider, I jumped, and I went on to make the jump. She introduced me to the former leader of the Night Runners, who were basically the Assassin's Creed of zombie apocalypses, when all of a sudden we were attacked by Waltz's men. They set up cannons on the rooftops, so I helped them down from there before something bad happened to them. Once again, I saved another city, and Lawan was so grateful that she introduced me to the current commander of the Peacekeepers, Jack Matt, the man with two first names. I was moving up in the world, so I was able to get a new skill called Perfect Dodge, which pretty much slows down time and staggers enemies when I dodge their attacks. This seems pretty basic, but this was actually so helpful with this challenge. I'm not even joking. 
Just hang on and you'll see what I mean. By the way, if you made it this far, please do me a favor and drop a like. You're obviously invested in this story. Anyway, me, Lawan, and her friends continued to bring the fight to Waltz's men. And we all grew closer because of it, but not as close as these two. Care to join? More the merrier. No thank you. I had all the kick skills at this point and I was just having fun being creative with these kills. Like this one guy who dropped his contacts under the couch. I even found this grapple hook that allowed me to be extra creative with my kills. Yeah, well, I, I don't understand. Is, is it for me? With great power comes great responsibility, so I responsibly used my powers to snoop under Lawan's bed, and what I found did not make my Peter tingle. Lawan and Hakan used to be a couple! How could Hakan be dumb enough to let her go? I found him, spider kicked his upper lip, and knocked some sense into him. Even though me and Lawan were clicking so well, I sucked it up, played the role of the number one wingman, and tried to get them back together. He said he wanted to protect you. Of course, Lawan was conflicted, but my bro Hakan played the role perfectly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This genius knew that she would be squirming in her bed thinking about that apology all night long. I had faith. But how could he win her back if there were no love songs in these dusty, musty-ass streets? So, I used my newfound powers to swing to the top of a broadcast tower, and I gave control to the leader of the Night Runners, who also had a dream of being an American radio personality. Good day, Philidor. Frank is back, and I've got some more exciting news for you. The city would soon be filled with the sound of 80s love songs. Now that everybody in the city had love and hope, it was time for me to focus on finding my sister again. I met this former GRE doctor named Veronica who was willing to go into a facility with me and help me gather some info. I dropkicked some zombie surgeons, turning them into surgical candidates themselves, and got to a computer with some info. Records show no patients named Mia. We continued to snoop when we were rudely interrupted by Waltz. I was tired of running away, so I brought the fight to him. And got folded like a panini. But it's okay, because after another chase sequence, I was given a chance to actually fight him. Right off the bat, my jaw dropped when I found out he didn't become a ragdoll when drop kicked. Then, he would hit me with this move. And I just thought to myself, what the freak did this game just become? Man is earthbending now. Luckily, he just walked slow and menacing towards me most of the time, giving me plenty of windows to dropkick him. And eventually, I learned his movesets well enough to perfect dodge them. Sadly, when I got him to half health, he threw me away like a crumpled bag of Doritos. I got so mad that I got constipated again, but instead of me controlling the constipation, the constipation controlled me, and let's just say Veronica was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I was ashamed of myself. I've become the very thing I swore to destroy, and just when I thought things couldn't get worse, Buildings were being destroyed and our assassin leader slash radio host got sniped with a poison arrow. Luckily, I recently read Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, so I made an antidote by mixing moon dew, puffapod spores, and flobber worm mucus and saved him. Just Gryffindor things, you know? I tracked down the renegades who tried to kill Frank and after asking them nicely, I found out that it was Jack Matt who was truly behind the assassination. He's the one who tried to have Frank killed. Leader of the peacekeepers, my ass. I confronted Jack when Frank, his Night Runners, and Hakan rolled up like the freaking Avengers. We were about to do a team ultimate attack when there was another missile strike. We all agreed to postpone this civil war until after we deal with Waltz. 
So me, Hakan, and Lawan stormed his facility. At this point, I must have thrown a thousand kicks by now. So I was air kicking, drop kicking, and vault kicking like a god. My legs were so buff that I could fight four volatiles at once. I was feeling like an absolute chad until I laid eyes on my long lost sister and Waltz dropped a bomb bigger than his missiles. Mia is my daughter, and you know that. No! Remembering how bad the new Star Wars trilogy was, I knew I had to end this story right here, right now. I drop kicked him, and the amount of damage I did put me to tears. The drop kick that carried me through the entire game now did 0.5 damage or something. I had to drop kick him twice just for his HP bar to show a tick of difference. I even tried drop kicking him off the platform and doing an air kick, but Aiden decided to become a literal chicken instead. <laughs> Luckily, his movesets were easy to learn, but I had to wait for him to completely finish a combo to get away with a dropkick safely. Another problem is that there's no UV lights in this area, so I would eventually have to worry about dying from my infection progressing. Fortunately, there were loads of UV shrooms on the floors, on the walls, so I would just harvest a bunch and after 10 minutes or so just sniff them all until I saw sounds and heard colors. In typical final boss fashion, whenever Waltz would reach a certain HP amount, he would switch up his movesets. It took me around 30 minutes to get his HP to this amount, when all of a sudden, he started slamming the ground and sent energy waves that killed me. Well, now that I was aware of that new attack and this slam, I was able to play really carefully and eventually defeat him after 3 hours. Or so I thought. This man stood right back up. And when I saw that second health bar appear on screen, I literally paused the game and took a nap. Of course he had a second phase, and this time he was done walking slowly and started running. He would run past you like three times, and then he would eventually stop and actually fight you. The opening here is that when he pounces on you, you can perfect dodge this attack, slow down time, and drop kick him before he did his whole running routine again. This is why I mentioned earlier that the perfect dodge skill was so important. If I didn't have it, I would probably miss so many opportunities to do damage and it would take days to beat him. But still, even with this ability, this phase took around 3 times longer to do damage to him, so it took me like 9 hours in total to beat him. That's an entire freaking work day. I tried convincing him to stop fighting because I was tired as hell. I told him that this isn't what Mia would have wanted. I started to smile when he started to agree, but then... That's why she cannot find out. Ever. A third phase? I wanted to die. Now, Waltz is hopping from platform to platform. It's funny though, because at one point he actually glitched through the ground and got stuck in this barricade or something, but sadly there was no way for me to exploit him. I literally died trying. My heart stopped as I was loading, but thank god there was a checkpoint. This time, I fought him up close and personal, and when I drop kicked him and looked at the damage, I freaking rejoiced, dude. This was gonna be a breeze. I even turned into an infected towards the end and stomped on him with the force of a thousand jackhammers. Once again, we were at a cutscene, and I was crossing my fingers and toes, all 20 of them, that this was the end. Of course not! These dumbass devs really put in a fourth phase. But I looked on the bright side. At least I did decent damage to him in the last phase. His immunity to kicks should be at an all-time low now, right? Wrong! Matter of fact, 
It took me five drop kicks just to do a tick of damage to his health bar, when previously it was just two drop kicks. This was gonna be like the nine hour phase all over again. I paused the game and went to bed. I didn't even put my PS5 on rest mode because I was so afraid of something happening in the middle of the night and me losing all of my progress. There was definitely an increase in greenhouse gases because of this challenge. Anyway, it was a brand new day. So I tried my best to look on the bright side. At least now, he was on 100% offense, so it was a lot more active gaming instead of just watching him run around like in phase 2 like a crackhead back and forth three times for me just to get in one drop kick, you know? The only problem I saw now is that I was in my infected form, so I wasn't able to use any of my items. So I was afraid that I would eventually die from the occasional hits he would get on me. Fortunately, you regenerate a bit when your health is critical. However, there was this point where he got me down to 1 HP and I have never ran away from a boss faster in my life, dude. I always joked about being constipated, but I've actually never clenched my butthole harder than at that very moment. But besides that one close call, everything else was relatively smooth and after 5-7 to seven hours or something, I was able to defeat him for the fourth time. At this point, I didn't even care if there was a fifth phase. I've already been through too much. I picked Waltz up and asked him for his opinion, but Mia said... She was about to give me the key to shut off the missiles, but Waltz was forever a thorn at my side. Now, the missiles were definitely going to take out the entire city, but not on Lawan's watch. She was willing to die to shut off those missiles. As for me, I could save either Lawan or Mia. It was a painful choice, but I couldn't let everyone in the city die just so Lawan wouldn't. And even if I did, she'd probably kill me for doing so. Lawan, you're the strongest person I've ever known. So, I used up all of my energy whatever what was left of it uh to get me and mia out of there the city was saved my boy hakan got lawan out alive sophie is the queen of the bazaar and the night runners watch over the city as for me i set off towards the horizon in search of more throats to shove my foot down and lawan would never miss one of my shows so can you beat Dying Light 2 with only kicks? Yes, but at the cost of your sanity. But jokes aside, I had a lot of fun both playing this game and making this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like, subscribe, and let me know which game and which challenge you'd like to see next. I'm thinking of doing Sifu only as an old man, but let me know. But until next time, I'm Agent, you're awesome, those are facts, and I'll be back in the next one. Peace.